Welcome back to Coding Shorts. My name is Sean Wildermuth. I've been in software development for over 35 years and teaching it for more than 20. Instead of having an ad break here, I'm going to take advantage of the time and show you a couple of things that I have going. One, if you're a Pluralsight subscriber, I do have an end-to-end -end course that starts with file new HTML file all the way through a completely finished application with the build a website with ASP.NET Core, Entity Framework, Tailwind, and Vue. In addition, I'm just launching my new six-week series of courses. The first course is going to be one on building an ASP.NET API from the ground up. These courses are taught a little differently in that I will be doing a live course via Zoom for two hours every week. And in between those weeks, you'll be doing labs that I'll go ahead and do code reviews and help you with any issues you have to really cement the ideas that are in the course. You can see the link on the screen if you want to know more. So today I'm going to be talking about something that was introduced in Entity Framework 7. What we haven't had a great solution for, and we were usually dropping down into SQL to do, was doing the idea of bulk updates. Doing bulk updates to tables usually involved having to either pull in a ton of records into memory, making the change and saving them, or using some other facilities for doing mass updates. In Entity Framework 7 and beyond, we, knew, we have a new facility for doing that. Let me show you how it works. I'm in a simple application here, address book, and I've built an API for this tiny little project that you may see here and again. You will only get the source code to this afterwards by looking at the show notes below the like button. So let's run this project for a moment. It's to just send requests for certain things I need. In this case, it's just a set of different addresses in an address book. And I have facility to create new ones and update new ones, etc. And the same goes for addresses within those. But what I'd like to do is do some cleanup. And so what I'd like is to have a in the entries API, this is just a minimal API I've built. I'm going to create a new post here and I'm going to call fix empty genders. And the idea behind this is, I'll call this fixed genders for now, is I want to be able to go through all the addresses and if they don't have a gender, if the gender is null or an empty string, I'd like to replace it with something. And because I'm using the repository pattern, let me go ahead and pull in my book repository. And let's change this so that it's returning the right things. I'm going to make this public so I can test it async, and I'm going to return an I result. Minimal API classes, and I'm just going to say return repository dot fix empty genders. And I'm going to put an async behind this. Cause I'm going to put an await next to it instead of async. Makes a lot more sense. So let's change this to have a result. And we'll just say if result, because it's going to be a Boolean, then return results.ok, right? Return results bad request or problem or whatever you want to do there. So I'm going to use refactoring to create that method in my repository. They're going to complain because I just want to stop this and continue. And if we come over to our fix empty genders, let's come up here and add this to the book entries. But we're going to want to go to the implementation class. And you'll notice it's complaining because we don't have that interface. And so let's see where they put it. Da, 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 probably all the way at the bottom. Perfect. So we're down to the point where we actually want to do the work, right? We have a context class here, and we're going to use a new method here called execute. Now notice it's complaining, and it's complaining because we actually have to have a query here. So I'm going to go to my entries, book entries, and I'm going to say where 
the entry gender string dot is no empty or white space, right? So if we don't have if we don't have anything in that gender, I want to have it executing an update. And what is that update going to do? You're going to supply it a lambda for something called setters. I'm going to shorten that to just an S because what I want to do is I want to set a property and I'm going to use another lambda to pick the property and that's gender. And then I'm going to give it a value. And this could be a function that computes a value, but more often we're just going to say unknown. Now these set properties can chain, so you can do set property on a bunch of these, but for us, we're only going to set the one. Let's go ahead and make this async, like we know we need it. We're going to return, let's put an await there, and I'm just going to put greater than zero. And because we want async, I always forget to put the async there. Now I can make this a little prettier, but the idea here is just like when you do a save all changes, this is going to return the number of rows that were affected. And as long as at least one row was affected, we're going to assume that it's successful. Hopefully I haven't messed anything up. And so let's first get all the entries. And you can see gender is null. I'm not sure how well you can see this. Let's make it a little bigger. Gender is null for a number of these. We've got female, male, specified, but null for some of these. And I don't want it. I don't want to deal with it as a null anymore. So let's go ahead and just say post API entries fixed gender. Let's make sure I called it right. I said fixed empty genders. And let's see what this does. Came back with an okay. We could have put a body on it that did something. But let's go ahead and send the request again. We can see now all the genders are unknown. And what's important to understand about how this works is that this is executing an atomic call to do this. So this ends up being an update table set gender to a known where gender is empty, right? This just is going to compute that call. And for fixed empty genders, that's great. But let's say we're going to need another one, and I'll do it in the opposite direction. Delete entries without addresses. Not a completely valid business case for this, but we have the idea that we want to clean it up and maybe we have dead entries that are based on something. We can do something very similar. Let's just change this to be e dot addresses dot any. Let's put a little not there. So we're going to say as if there aren't any addresses on this entry, execute delete async. And this doesn't have any of this magic because delete async, you aren't setting anything, you're just calling delete. And in this case, we're doing this in bulk. This actually makes sense. Let's go ahead and pull this up into the interface. And then over in our API, we can go ahead and say delete without addresses or however we want to do that. And all we're going to do here is like we did before, we're going to say public async task i result. Our result equals await repository dot. You don't have a repository yet. I forgot we have to change this. Delete entries without addresses. And then I'll do some editor inheritance or copy paste as I like to call it. We'll get the same idea that we can delete all the entries in there. And in this case, we'll do something even better. We'll say, we'll just create a result, right? Let's restart this. And then back in our address book, we'll do the same. We'll, this time we'll have, make it a delete. Delete with no uh, addresses. I think I called that the right thing. And you'll notice in the results here, we do have some individual items that don't have any addresses, like this 159 won't exist. So let's go ahead and send that request. And I misnamed it, I'm sure. Call it again. And we're getting back that uh, it, it did in fact delete items. And if we run this again, we shouldn't be able to see any that don't have an address list. 
Now, with all bulk updates, this is something you do have to be careful of. You don't want to do these bulk updates in a really simple way that could destroy or accidentally update a lot of code, because these are really just update all where um, commands for SQL or whatever the data store underneath is. So it's important to really understand what you're doing and where you're doing. Now, at first, I thought that these would be great for actual updates. So let's go back to the actual API and let's see what's actually doing for updates, right? And so when I create a new entry, there's really no way we can do this with exec because we do need to take the new object and I'm using Mapster to map it into the new entity and saving it and all that's fine. When we do an update or a put, we're getting the, we're making a round trip to getting the entry and then we are modifying the entry again with Mapster and then saving them all. And this works pretty well. The problem with using something like update all is that you would have to know all the properties that were changed and only set those manually. And that's problematic. That's, you can look at the change request and all of that, but you're gonna end up with the same code ultimately that the say async does for you is compute that query, that updated entry into a set of setters for you. So for update, I don't really see a good way, but for delete, one of the things I don't like about the way delete works is, again, you get a round trip just to see that we can remove it, otherwise save async. And so let's change this one real quick. Here, I'm just gonna say result equals await repository delete entry. And we'll give it our ID, because that's all we need. We don't need the actual entry to do it. Comment out so you can leave, see what I was doing before. If result, then return results.ok. Otherwise, it'll return not found because we couldn't find it for some reason. So let's go ahead and implement that. You'll see a little bit that I like doing this both ways, right? One of the interesting things about having to add to my repository to do delete, whereas before it was just using a generic remove and a generic save all async. Let's go ahead and add that element. Should be at the bottom again. And in here we can use this exec delete just like we saw before, right? But what are we going to do? We're literally just going to say e.id equals id. Even though this is only going to change one element because we're using that primary key. This becomes a lot easier to write. You might even find a generic way to handle this. So if we go back to our address book, we have an actual delete here. And let's go ahead and delete 141 since we have one that we can actually delete. Set OK. And so if I come back here and I try to get 141, should say not found, right? And so this is kind of a decision you need to make. And that is, is creating a single one of these, or maybe there's a way to do this generically to where you can delete entries so that your repository has to have deletes on each one of them. Or you might want to continue to using gets in the repository, assuming you're using a repository, or having gets in the repository and then doing the old method that requires two round trips. The benefit here, is only that it is executing it in a single round trip. It doesn't have to get the object, delete it from the contacts, and then generate that. This all becomes an atomic operation. Is it faster? Yeah. Will it matter? Do you delete entries really that often? It might not matter. I really think the big use case for exec, update, and delete are about doing these mass changes, making changes across a table or a series of tables in an efficient way. So as I've continued to talk about Entity Framework and some of the changes, I got sort of stuck into the space where Entity Framework was sort of so solid that I wasn't really moving with or keeping up with the EF changes. You know, I'm no Julie Lerman who keeps up with it all uh, in the minutiae, she knows all 
uh, things in any framework. It's been nice to update some of my knowledge. And this is one of those that I was like, oh, this is a nice, small, concise update, no matter how long this video ends up being. So I want to thank you for getting this far. Again, I would love it if you liked or subscribed to the channel. That really helps me. And don't forget of my different training opportunities that I talked about at the head of the show. I'll see you next time on Coding Shorts.